kind of ugly, but you get the idea. Okay, that's the outside part. So what I'm going to do is take the whole thing, multiply it by the outside segment. Do you understand the outside segment? It goes from the point of intersection to the point itself, or on the circle. So let's write that down. What would the whole thing be? As far as our letters are concerned, what would the whole thing be? AC. So I take the whole thing, multiply it by the outside segment, which would be what? AB. Now, what do you think we're going to do on the other one? Same exact thing. Let's take the whole thing on the other secant. I don't have to write whole there, do I? You understand what that means now. What's the whole thing over here? AE, A, good, times the outside segment, which is AD, good. And there it is. That's our formula when you have two secants that intersect at a point outside the circle. You take the whole thing. You multiply it by the outside part. You take the whole thing of the other one, multiply it by its outside part, and then you've got... Um, a way to solve for x. Now it all depends what you do after that on what parts they give you, what they want to solve for, and all that kind of stuff. Uh. Alright, now we're going to put some numbers in here. This one's technically not an example. It's kind of like a practice problem. That's okay. We're going to say that's x. We're going to say that's 9. This little bit right here is 4. And this little bit here is 5. Obviously not drawn to scale because that 9 and that 5, they're not that different, are they? But that's okay. We're, we're just trying to do the math here. Let's uh, set up our little thing right here, and let's solve for x. So let's take the out, the whole thing. I always do that. Well, it doesn't matter. What's the whole thing here? Is it 9x? A lot of people say that. It's, not, it's x plus 9. That's right. It's, okay, it's not 9 times x. You don't multiply them together. You're getting the whole entire segment right here, which is an addition. So it's x plus 9. Now, I multiply that, the, outs, or the whole thing, times the what? times the outside segment. Good. What's the outside segment here? It's x. Now you could put it right here. I'm going to put it out in front. Is that okay? Alright. And you do the same thing to the other one. What's the whole thing? It's what? It's 9. Okay. So I multiply that by 9 times what? The outside part is 4. See how easy that is? It's not hard. I like to remember it. Take the whole thing, multiply it by the outside. If you can remember that part, it's not hard to do this stuff. Now let's do the math right here. The math is a little bit, the algebra is just a little bit different than we're used to. But you learned this in Algebra 1, so hope we haven't done a ton of this. Okay, somebody want to snap them out of it? So, x squared plus 9x minus 36 equals 0. Watch what we do. Look at this. This is a quadratic. What are we going to do to solve for this quadratic? We've done this a few times this year, not a whole lot. What is it? Mm, not substitution. You don't like this? Factor. Remember? Factoring? They call it trinomial factoring. So what do we do? We put an x right here. I'm not sitting here and teaching this whole entire lesson, you know, but um, this is just review. It should be review anyway. Uh, we'll do a ton of this in Algebra 2 next year, and we'll start right from the beginning, but you're supposed to learn this in Algebra 1. <laughs> so what are you going to use? This times this has to equal negative 36, and they have to add up to be a 9. Can you think of a couple numbers? that the same two numbers, they multiply to be 36, negative 36, and they add up to be positive 9. No, All right, well, think of the numbers. Just think of the numbers. What multiplies to be 36 and adds up to be positive 9? What do you think? 12 and negative 3. Good. So it's plus 12 minus 3. That's the hardest part about doing this. It's just you don't like doing that? It's kind of like a little trivia game inside your head, right? You're trying to figure out what two numbers multiply to be this and add up to be this right here. It's kind of like the backwards of FOIL method is kind of what it is. It's factoring. Well, let's continue. In Algebra 1, you probably did this, but I'm just going to tell you right now, you set both of these things equal to 0. So you set that equal to 0, you set that equal to 0, and now you solve for x. So x is negative 12, it's supposed to be equal sign, and x is positive 3. Now you think, you look at this, in algebra, that would be fine. We'd be done. If, that's, if this was my problem in algebra, I would just leave that and say, oh, that's my answer, and that would be fine. This is not just algebra, though. We're actually solving for what? Solving not just for x, but what is x? What does it represent? It represents a what? A line segment. Okay, the length of a line segment. Look at my answers. Which one doesn't make any sense for the length of a line segment? Negative 12 doesn't make any sense because I can't have a negative line segment, can I? A negative length to my line segment. So I just get rid of that one and keep this one. That's all I do. So the length of that is 3. Got it? All right, let's do one more. Different one, okay? Again, let's review real quick. What is this? Two secants that intersect where? Outside the circle. Let's do another. 
Now, this is the third one. This is the last one. Now we're going to do a secant and a tangent. So let's say, you think that looks like a tangent? Does it keep on going like that? Yeah, it's pretty close. And let's do a secant. So that keeps on going all the way through, doesn't it? All right. Actually, is that the one I want to draw? I lied. I was thinking of the other one. I want to, I want to point outside of here. All right, so actually I want a point outside here and I'm going to draw a secant right to the circle itself and then I'm going to take this and draw it tangent. So that would be about right there, wouldn't it? But I'm going to make it hit the circle. There we go. Now we're talking. Now check out, now we talked the other day, yesterday, day before, or something like that, about this angle, right? We took this arc and this arc, took half of it, subtracted them, took half of it, and that's what this angle is. Don't care about the uh, angle at this point. What I care about is the line segment, so A, B, C, D. Now check it out. I've got a secant. It starts off exactly the way we did the other two. So it's the whole thing. What's the whole thing? It's a little ugly. It's AC, isn't it? So let's do this. It's AC times... Same thing as before, because it's a secant, times the outside. So what's the outside here? It's BC, but equals. Now, check this out. Look at the tangent. It doesn't have an outside or inside segment, does it? It doesn't go through it. So really, the outside is the whole thing, isn't it? Do you see it? So the whole entire tangent is the everything's on the outside. So we're not going to go the whole thing times the outside. We're going to go... The whole thing times the whole thing, or the, whole, or the outside times the outside. Do you follow me? So we're going to take this times itself. What do we do when we take something and multiply it by itself? We square it. Good. So you could, you could have written DC times DC, but it's a little nicer if you just write it like that. So there is our formula. Oops. Went off the screen. All right. There's the formula right there. Okay. So you take the secant works the same way. You take the whole thing times the outside part. The tangent, you just take the tangent part and you square it, and then you're good to go. Let's stick some numbers in here. Let's do a problem. So let's say, we'll just keep this here. So that's 8. Let's say this part right there is 7. And let's say this part right here is x. All right? So here we go. Now, they would put one in here that came out real crazy. Do we have any time? Oh, I wish we'd get one that came out nice. But anyway, it doesn't. So let's do the whole, let's just set it up and you can do the math on it. We're not going to have time to do the math. First of all, what's the whole thing here? Yeah, 7 plus x or x plus 7. And we multiply by the outside part, which is x. What do we do with this thing right here? 8, eight times 8, which is 8 squared, which is 64. So you go what? x squared plus 7x equals 64. What did we just finish doing? Minus 64 equals 0. This doesn't factor. Real nice. I don't think it does. Nope. It doesn't factor. So you got to have another way to do it. Do you remember the, Pyth uh, the well, not Pythagorean theorem, quadratic formula? Do you remember that? Hold on just a second. Just give me a second. It's eighth period, so you can take a couple minutes here. So it's what? Negative B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC over 2A. All right. So what is the, uh, what is the A here? A is 1. What's the B? 7. What's the C? It's negative 64. So watch. Put A, B, and C into this thing right here, and you'll come up with an answer. It's, a, it's an example in the book if you want to see it. Let me give you some problems to work on. Where did I put my you book? You don't have to. I do have to. I don't want to let you down. I know you'll be disappointed. You will not let me down. Oh, I'm sure I would. Yeah. All right, here it is. It's page um, 740. And we're doing numbers 6 to 21. There it is. All right. Have fun. Enjoy it.